Hello. I am your host, as always, the Archivist. Whew. Sorry, I just ate like a whole hot hamburger in like five minutes. I eat very fast. Um, elementary school days. Sooner you eat, sooner you're out to recess. So. Anywho. I'm kind of watching the She-Hulk episode 2 for the second time. And yes, what I thought about it is still pretty much how I thought about it. It sucks. We have whiny transforming uh, She-Hulk. We have... Uh, what else was it? Uh, let's see here. Her not accepting the triumph that is her, you know, first battle. It's a lot like Teen Wolf near the end where he's like rebelling against the... Everyone wants the, the wolf and then he's like, no, no, I'm just going to be me. You know, she's like that where it's like, no, no I'm not going to be She-Hulk. And they're calling me She-Hulk? Oh, that's not a derivative name. You know, it's like, I can't even be out of my, my cousin's shadow or... Something like that, and I'm just like, oh my god, this is not the character we can root for. A whiny little... <laughs> Sorry. A whiny character is not something we can get behind. You know, it's not I, what I can get behind. I cannot get behind this character. In the animated series, she was, again, a two-dimensional character because she was a cartoon character. But she was a likable car a cartoon character. She was a confident, at times a little overconfident, but it was never her downfall. Hold on a second. Point is, point is, as two-dimensional as she was, she was likable. She was quippy. She was very 90s cartoonish, which is a plus and a minus, depending on how old you are and how much of the 90s you still like. But I still like the fact that she was this endlessly confident woman. She was the She-Hulk. You know, attorney at law. And, she, and everyone loves her, and she knows it. It was that endless confidence. But that's unrealistic. You know, women these days are not that sexy. No, they have that endless confidence. You know, it's like, yes, we know. But we still like the trope anyway. Or the character, you know? Oh, well, it's too fan service She's got a wine and mope and... Well, quite frankly, it's just face it. She's going to bitch her way through every single episode. Find something wrong she doesn't like. You know, ref you know the rejection of the hero's journey. Okay, everybody did it. Hell, even Luke. But for the love of God, this character is just a whiny little brat. It's like, just... It, 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 it's like, yes, we know life can take some unexpected turns. Well, you gotta deal with it, accept it, and embrace it. And like, what? It's gonna be at the end of the series, of season, and she's finally gonna accept, I'm She-Hulk. You know, like we see later on in the trailer where she actually starts liking herself. And it's like, oh, for God's sakes. Again, this would be interesting if it was actually done right, but it's not. You know? None of this is done right. None of this is interesting. This is all just played up for laughs and, you know, what was written down on paper. You know, in theory, this should work and kind of be neat and, you know, kind of likable. Okay, but the setup, the execution does not warrant. Nothing in here is right at all, you know, other than the hero's journey is all it is. It's the hero's journey. And it's like, okay, yes, we got that. And I guess having her just jump right into being She-Hulk, as what we remember, I guess is a little too quick. Okay, sure, fine. So it's be a series of her getting there and accepting this new path like we've seen heroes before. It takes a little while to embrace the new hero. 
but she's still so whiny. Ugh. And again, she's not quippy, really. I mean, okay, the one joke I laughed at was when Hulk says, I, it was so long ago when I when I fought the abominations, I was literally a different person back then. And then cuts back to She-Hulk on the other side of the phone going, ha ha. Like, yes, like she's in on the joke too because she's meta. You know, it's like, yeah, we, we get the joke. Yeah, so, okay, that was kind of funny. I like that. <sighs> but it's just more, like, meh. You know, more mediocre, more... Yes, I can see you trying to do this, but not really sticking the landing like you're supposed to, you know? It's not compelling me at all. If anything, you're just annoying me more with how much she keeps resisting against things. Heaven forbid we see a strong, you know, confident woman who actually is oversexed. They do exist. I've seen them out there. They do exist. But that's not an every type, you know, every an everybody type. It's like, yes, I know right now a lot of the people are kind of more leaning towards the Pillsbury Doughboy edge of the spectrum. I get that. We're finally getting out of this fucking... COVID thing, so people are now starting to go more and more outside. I get that, but making Kamala Khan you know, body positive, you know, it's like along with everything else wrong with it, that they did all new and modern is stupid. It's like, what, 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 you're trying to appease to these kids, really? Wow. I mean, her talking about her versus her social life her religious life and her home life, yeah, that makes for interesting, you know, conflict, for interesting story. If it was actually done right, they're brought up, are they resolved? No, not really. No, no. And blah, there, it's the end of the story. See you credits at the end of the next season, bye! You know? And that's what it, that's, that's all that series was. It was a lot of meandering about, running about, not really resolving anything. And look at me. I'm a hero now. I know parkour. And I have my powers down flat. While wearing a girdle. <laughs> I'm not gonna blo I'm not gonna put that down, by the way. I'm not gonna put that down. Yeah, no, no, no. <sighs> and much like this before, okay, yes, they hand her the superpower. She gets it not of her own accord, you know. But she just doesn't really do much with it. I mean, this is more, like, problematic. It's like, yes, we get that. Being She-Hulk would be problematic. But this is more about it being problematic than her just kind of coming to terms a little sooner that this might be awesome. This is the first day of the rest of your life. And it's going to be awesome. But no, she's got to be whiny. Yeah. Oh, for God's sakes. No, it's not. It, it, it's not compelling. It's just not compelling. Disney, what are you doing? Just give us the damn specials you promised us for Owl House. Just, just give us that. Then, you know, if anything else. I mean, yeah, it's kind of cool that they brought back in the Abomination. If they bring back Howard, that would be a hell of a lot more interesting. You know, have an episode where they, she teams up with him. That would be interesting. They used to have a um, a partnership back in the day where they were in the uh, Baloney Burst. There was a miniseries about that. You know, so... So yeah, that's all I can say for episode two. It's, that's, that's it. That's it. All right, let's see you next week. Let's see what other cameo appearances they have to try and, you know, keep this episode, this keep the series afloat. Let's hope it lasts more than just two minutes on screen. Okay. All right then. Take care, and as always, see you at the movies. Bye.